I was 17 when everything in my life flipped upside down. My older brother, Jake, had always been my rock after our mom passed away when I was just 10. We were close, sharing everything from late night conversations to family dinners with our dad. Dad was great, instilling values of loyalty and honesty in us, especially about relationships. He always told us that if we ever cheated, we'd have to face the consequences. I believed him, loyalty mattered above all. I had been dating my girlfriend, Mia, for about a year. To me, she was perfect, and I genuinely thought she was, the one. She got along well with my family, especially Jake, who seemed to enjoy spending time with her. They bonded over shared interests, and I never thought twice about it. One day, after practice, I came home earlier than usual. I tossed my bag aside and headed to the kitchen, looking forward to a snack. I noticed Jake's car in the driveway, which was strange since he usually worked late. I assumed he was just taking a rare day off. As I climbed the stairs, I heard voices coming from my room, Jake's and Mia's. At first, I thought they might be playing a game or looking for something, but then I heard laughter that didn't sit right with me. With a racing heart, I pushed the door open, and there they were, together on my bed. Time seemed to freeze as I processed the scene. My brother and my girlfriend, caught in a moment of betrayal. I stood there, paralyzed by shock. Mia scrambled off the bed, while Jake looked frozen, his face a mask of confusion. I was overwhelmed by a rush of emotions, anger, hurt, disbelief. How could they do this to me? They both stumbled over their words, trying to explain something that was inexplicable. Jake muttered apologies, while Mia insisted they had feelings for each other. I was furious. How could they justify this? I felt my hands shaking as I ordered them to leave my room. Mia pleaded to talk, but I shut her down. I felt sick and humiliated. They left, and I collapsed on the floor, overwhelmed by a tidal wave of emotions. The trust one had in them was shattered. I wanted to escape from it all, so I grabbed my things and left the house, wandering aimlessly for hours, grappling with the betrayal of my brother and girlfriend. When I finally returned home, Dad was waiting for me in the kitchen. His worried gaze pierced through my facade. I tried to play it cool, but he saw right through me. I finally broke down and told him what happened. His reaction was explosive. The look of pure anger on his face as he processed the betrayal was something I would never forget. When Jake finally entered the kitchen, I could see the guilt and regret on his face, but it didn't matter. Dad confronted him, his voice full of rage as he called him out for hurting me and destroying our brotherly bond. It was brutal. In a moment that felt surreal, Dad decided to kick Jake out of the house. I stood there, both relieved and devastated, feeling like our family was crumbling around me. After Jake left that night, things felt empty. I felt guilty, but Dad reassured me that I hadn't done anything wrong. I spent the next few years navigating life without my brother. I occasionally heard updates about him from family, but our ties were effectively severed. Life continued, but it was hard to shake the feeling of loss. Dad became my anchor, and I supported him through health struggles. We laughed together, tried to keep things light, but I could see him fading. When he passed away, I felt utterly alone. Sorting through Dad's will was another emotional blow. I found out he had saved some money, which I wasn't expecting. I felt conflicted about it. Jake hadn't even shown up for the funeral, and now he was trying to reach out, asking for help with the inheritance. When I met him at a coffee shop, the tension was palpable. Jake wanted to talk about the money, but I snapped at him, reminding him of his choices. I had no intention of sharing my inheritance with someone who betrayed me so deeply. I stood my ground, feeling a mix of anger and disappointment as he stormed out, leaving me to ponder the future. I knew I had to move forward, focusing on my life, but a part of me still held on to the hope that one day, Jake would genuinely try to make amends, not for money, but because he missed being my brother. For now, 
I would honor my father's memory by staying strong and not letting anyone take advantage of me. In the aftermath of the confrontation, the air in our house was thick with tension. I watched as my father, usually calm and composed, transformed into a storm of anger. When Jake stepped into the kitchen, ready to defend his actions, Dad cut him off with a voice that could have shattered glass. How could you do this to your brother, he roared, his words laced with disappointment. Jake tried to explain, but every word that came out of his mouth felt like a betrayal to me. My heart sank as I listened to him stammer excuses, attempting to justify the unthinkable. It wasn't just about me anymore, it felt like our entire family foundation was crumbling right in front of us. The bond that had once held us together was now a battleground of guilt and rage. I stood in silence, rooted to the spot, feeling both ashamed and responsible for what had happened. I never wanted it to come to this. I couldn't help but feel that I had somehow failed. My father must have sensed my internal struggle because his piercing gaze fell on me. This isn't your fault, he said, his voice softer but still heavy with pain. Jake made his own choices. Hearing him say that should have eased my guilt, but instead, it only deepened the sorrow I felt. How could I ever reconcile the love I once had for Jake with the betrayal that stung my heart? I watched as Dad's fury began to shift, replaced by a profound sadness. The weight of his disappointment hung heavily in the air as he faced his son, now a stranger. Get out, Dad said finally, his voice firm yet trembling. You don't deserve to stay here after what you've done. Those words echoed in the room, and I felt a chill run down my spine. I had never seen my father so resolute, and it struck me hard, this was not just a decision about Jake, it was a turning point for our entire family. Jake's face contorted with shock, and for a brief moment, I saw a flicker of the brother I once adored. But the reality of his actions overshadowed it. He opened his mouth to protest, but Dad's expression made it clear there was no room for negotiation. With tears of anger and regret brimming in his eyes, Jake turned away, slamming the door behind him as he left. The finality of that sound echoed through our home, sealing the rift that had opened between us. After he was gone, the house felt eerily quiet. I could sense the shift in the atmosphere, it was as if the walls themselves were mourning the loss of our brotherhood. Dad slumped into a chair, burying his face in his hands. I hesitated before moving closer, unsure of what to say. But in that moment, I realized we were both grieving, not just for the brother I had lost, but for the family we once were. I don't know what to do, Dad, I finally said, my voice barely a whisper. I never wanted any of this. He looked up at me, and his eyes were filled with understanding and sadness. Neither did I, he replied, wiping away a few tears. But you have to remember, it's not your fault. You didn't choose this path for him. His words wrapped around me like a warm blanket, soothing the ache of guilt in my chest. I needed to hear that, I needed to know that despite the betrayal, I wasn't the one responsible for breaking our family apart. It hurts, I admitted, my voice cracking. I know it does, son. It's going to take time to heal, Dad replied, his tone gentle. We have to lean on each other now. That's all we can do. We spent the evening talking, piecing together what our new reality would look like without Jake. It was hard, every memory felt tainted by his betrayal. Yet, I was grateful for my father's presence, for the bond we were still able to share in the wake of the storm. It was going to be a long journey of rebuilding trust, but I held on to the hope that we could find a way to navigate this new normal together. As the days passed, the initial shock began to fade, but the pain lingered. I wrestled with my emotions, trying to reconcile the love I had for my brother with the hurt he caused. But with Dad by my side, I learned that healing doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, patience, and, most importantly, the willingness to forgive, not just others, but ourselves. As the days turned into weeks, I found myself taking on more responsibility around the house. My father's health began to deteriorate, the stress from the fallout took a toll on him, both physically and emotionally. 
I watched helplessly as he struggled with his illness, feeling like I was losing him too. There were nights when I'd sit by his bedside, holding his hand while he fought off the darkness that threatened to consume him. I tried to be strong for him, to be the son he needed, but the weight of our shared grief was heavy. I often wondered if I could somehow fill the void left by Jake's betrayal, yet it felt impossible. My father had lost not only his son but also the closeness we once shared. The sadness hung in the air like a thick fog, suffocating our attempts at normalcy. I cooked meals, helped him with his medications, and listened to him reminisce about better times, but every moment felt like a reminder of what we had lost. The day of Dad's funeral arrived, and I was filled with a profound sense of isolation. I had expected a small gathering of family and friends, but I was met with an empty chair where Jake should have sat. It was like a gaping wound had opened in the middle of the ceremony, and I felt it acutely. I searched the crowd for him, hoping he'd show up to pay his respects, but he never came. The absence of my brother during such a pivotal moment solidified the rift between us, and I couldn't help but feel anger mingled with the grief. As I stood there, listening to eulogies about my father's kindness and strength, tears streamed down my face. Each story felt like a dagger, reminding me of how little time we had left together and how quickly everything had changed. I tried to hold it together for Dad, to honor him by staying strong, but the pain of his absence overwhelmed me. I thought of the bond we shared and how it had been severed, not just by Jake's actions but by fate itself. I felt utterly alone, battling a storm of emotions that seemed insurmountable. It was as if the grief I carried was a living entity, suffocating me with every breath. As people came up to offer their condolences, I put on a brave face, thanking them for their support, but inside, I was crumbling. I missed the laughter we shared, the comfort of knowing my father was always there for me, and the possibility of healing our family. Now, all that remained were memories tinged with sorrow. After the service, as everyone left, I lingered by the gravesite, staring at the freshly turned earth. I could still hear the echoes of my father's laughter in my mind, the way he always knew how to lighten the mood, even during the darkest times. But that laughter felt distant now, like a fading whisper. In the following days, the isolation deepened. I found myself grappling with not just the loss of my father but also the loss of my brother. The reality that Jake had chosen to distance himself was a bitter pill to swallow. It was a reminder that betrayal can fracture bonds beyond repair, leaving nothing but lingering emptiness in its wake. As I sat alone in the living room, surrounded by the silence that had replaced our once lively home, I realized that grief is not just about losing someone, it's about facing the reality of life without them. I missed the way my father had guided me through life, and now I had to learn to navigate this new world on my own. It was daunting, but in my heart, I held on to the hope that one day, I would find a way to heal, not just from the loss of my father but also from the betrayal that had shattered our family. After my father's passing, I found myself in an emotional whirlwind, trying to come to terms with everything I'd lost. When it came time to sort through my father's will, I had no idea what to expect. I assumed there wouldn't be much left after his medical bills, but I was wrong. My father had set aside some savings and investments I hadn't known about. The revelation felt surreal, almost like a betrayal in itself. As the lawyer laid out the details, I glanced at my aunt, who wore a sad expression. He really wanted to make sure you were taken care of, she said, her voice gentle. I nodded, appreciating my father's foresight. After everything that had happened, it felt fair that he left me something, especially since Chris had walked away from us, leaving behind nothing but hurt and disappointment. I couldn't shake the finality of the situation. My father's choices were clear, he had drawn a line, and Chris had crossed it. I couldn't help but feel a mix of anger and sorrow as I thought about what our family used to be. All this tension over a girl who wasn't even in the picture anymore. It all felt pointless. A few days later, out of the blue, I received a message from Chris. I hadn't heard from him in years, not since he left. We need to talk, it read. My heart raced with mixed emotions, part of me was curious about what he wanted, 
but another part was resolute in my decision to keep my distance. I agreed to meet him at a coffee shop, a neutral ground that felt safer than anywhere else. When I arrived, I saw him sitting at a table, looking just as uneasy as I felt. Hey, I said, trying to keep my tone neutral. Hey, he replied, his voice barely above a whisper. I waited for him to say something more, but he just fidgeted with his coffee cup. Finally, I broke the silence. What do you want, Chris? He looked up, taking a deep breath. I know I messed up. I've heard about the inheritance. I don't think it's fair that Dad left you everything and almost nothing for me. His words ignited a fire inside me. You think you deserve any of it after everything you did? I snapped, my anger bubbling to the surface. You didn't even show up for Dad's funeral. You think you can just waltz back in here and ask for money? Chris looked down at the table, guilt creeping into his expression. I know, I know, but things were complicated. Don't even bring her up. I interrupted, cutting him off. I don't want to hear any excuses about Ashley or how complicated things were. You made your choice when you walked away from this family. He flinched at my words, and for a moment, I thought he might actually understand. I'm not here to fight. I just thought maybe we could start fresh in. I shook my head. You made your choice a long time ago. I'm not holding a grudge, I'm just not pretending everything's fine when you've done nothing to fix what you broke. Chris sighed, frustration etched on his face. Fine, if that's how it's going to be. I watched him leave, a mix of anger and disappointment swirling within me. Part of me had hoped he'd come back, genuinely apologetic, but he was still the same. I needed to move forward, with or without him. Despite the confrontation, I focused on rebuilding my life. I got a new job and moved to a different apartment, trying to create a fresh start. Still, the ache of losing my brother lingered. I had hoped that one day, Chris would understand the weight of his actions and try to make amends, not for the money, but because he truly wanted to reconnect. In the weeks following that tense encounter with Chris, I found myself grappling with the emotions I had buried deep. My aunt was relentless, calling me frequently, urging me to reconsider my stance on reconciliation. Your family, and family is everything, she insisted, her voice filled with concern. But what she didn't understand was that family wasn't just about blood, it was about trust, respect, and the bonds we choose to nurture. I know you want to help, but you don't know how much he hurt me, I replied one afternoon, trying to maintain my composure. He made his choices, and now I have to make mine. I need to prioritize my well-being. The truth was, I felt freer without Chris in my life. The weight of his betrayal had begun to lift, replaced by the understanding that I was capable of moving forward without him. I focused on building a new life, filled with friends who supported me and experiences that brought me joy. I started going to the gym, taking art classes, and even volunteered at a local shelter. Each new step helped heal the wounds Chris had left behind. However, the memory of our past lingered like a shadow. There were nights when I lay awake, wondering if he ever thought about what he had lost. I held on to a glimmer of hope that, in time, he might realize the consequences of his actions and find a way back to me. But I wasn't going to sit idly by, waiting for a brother who had chosen to disappear. I set clear boundaries in my life. I didn't respond to Chris's occasional texts, and I made it known to my aunt that I wasn't interested in pursuing any form of reconciliation. I appreciated her concern, but I had to take care of myself first. I focused on nurturing the relationships that were meaningful to me friends who respected my choices and understood the depths of my pain. With every passing day, the wounds felt less raw. I started embracing my newfound independence and building a life I was proud of. I discovered a passion for painting that had been buried under years of family turmoil. My canvases were filled with vibrant colors, expressing the emotions I struggled to articulate. Each stroke felt like a release, a way to channel the anger and betrayal into something beautiful. 
I often thought about Chris, not with anger but with a sense of sadness. I hoped that one day he might realize what he had lost, not just our relationship, but the chance to be a part of something real again. Still, I couldn't hold my breath waiting for that day. Life was too short to dwell on what might have been. Instead, I focused on the present, embracing my new boundaries and the strength they provided. I surrounded myself with people who uplifted me, and slowly but surely, I began to find joy again. Chris's absence had created a void, but it also opened up space for new connections and experiences. In the quiet moments, I would reflect on everything that had happened. I learned that healing doesn't follow a straight path, it's a winding journey filled with ups and downs. But I was determined to keep moving forward, with or without my brother. And perhaps, one day, he might understand the gravity of his choices and the impact they had on our family. Until then, I would carry on, ready to embrace whatever the future had in store for me.